Hey there folks, it's Rosie and this morning I woke up hungry. Hungry for a craft, that is. So, I thought, let's hit that craving with some pizza. For materials, I used a pair of scissors, big kid scissors here, some liquid glue, liquid will be best for this, orange and yellow yarn for cheese, a paper plate for the crust, some red paper that I used for sauce, and I used foam paper to cut up my toppings and markers to outline everything. So let's sauce this pie. When you look at your paper plate, the lip of that plate where it comes up off the table is going to be your crust. So the sauce will go inside of that area. Now you can push down your paper all the way around the plate to measure out that area, or you can run your finger along the crease right where your plate starts to pick up into the lip. Because when you do that, you're going to trace a perfect circle. And this is gonna show you the size that you want to make your sauce blob. And yes, I did say sauce blob, because in real life, your pizza sauce is a liquid, so it might not spread to be such a perfect circle. That's why I drew this wiggly circle just about over top of that circle that we traced with our finger. When I cut this out, it's going to look like well, it's gonna look like a blob, but in our pizza, it's gonna look like a real puddle of pizza sauce. And ta-da, we're sauced. But now we have to glue it down, so be careful here. Because my rule with liquid glue especially is that a dot will do a lot. I'm just going to run a line around my blob and an X in the middle with the glue. I'm not painting it, I'm not pouring a ton down. You don't need very much, just enough for it to stick to the plate. And that's my lecture on liquid glue. Just remember kids, a dot will do a lot. So. We're gonna press our nicely glued sauce down and I think we're ready for toppings. I want a deluxe pizza with a lot of toppings on it. So I'm gonna draw out some green peppers and some basil leaves on my green foam sheet. Just a reminder folks, all pizzas are different. You might not wanna put these toppings on your pizza and that is totally great. I just wanna show you as many toppings as I can. So I made little leaves for my basil and these long strips for my bell peppers. For my mushrooms, I think of that shape as almost an oval with a rectangle coming out of it. The oval being your mushroom top and the rectangle being the stem underneath it. Along with my mushrooms, I also wanna make some sausage, just like a broken up piece of sausage. So they don't all have to look the same. I made almost like little cloud shapes. And now that we have our brown and our green topping pages all drawn out, it's time to draw out the last color page I got for the black olives. I'm just drawing some circles here and I'll cut a circle out in the middle of each of them from the pit. I have one drawn here just to show you. Now it's time to cut out all of our toppings. I chose foam paper for our toppings not only to give another texture, but also because I really like the feeling of cutting out foam paper. I don't know if it's just me. It's just a little springier and I really like that. But if you don't have any foam paper, construction paper will work great. Or if you want an extra creative challenge, use white paper and you can draw and color your own toppings to add to the pie. That would make a really beautiful pizza. I'd love to see it. Now I'm gonna start cutting out my basil leaves. For the first one, I went straight for it, cutting that leaf out, and I accidentally cut off the stem. So for the next basil leaf, I'm gonna start by cutting out that skinny little stem first because it's kind of tricky and the rest of the leaf will be a lot easier afterwards. There we go, much better. I'm gonna cut them out stem first for the rest of them too. And my friends, I just want you to take note on how excited I am. I love these little leaves, they're so cute. Sometimes crafts can just make you smile so much. Here's my bell peppers and my basil, and I wanna show you my scrap pile. Now here's what I think about scraps. I personally save my scraps from all my crafts in a big bin in my craft closet. 
I like to reuse things as much as I can. And you can even see the scraps that I made here. I still have a lot of that red paper and a lot of that green foam paper left over here that I could absolutely find another use for. I might even find a use for it in this craft. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And I'm trying to cut out those little brown sausage clouds now, which are tricky with big kid scissors. So if you're using smaller scissors, you might find it a little easier, but that's just my helpful hint to you. And now let's cut our olives out. So this is gonna be easy at first. You're just cutting out the circles of your olives, but we're going to then have to cut out a circle from the middle of these circles. And that's a tricky skill. So let me have you think back. Have you ever made a snowflake with paper and scissors? Well, when you fold up that piece of paper and cut out one half of a shape, when you open it up, that second half is going to be there because of the folded side. So when we fold these olive shapes in half, and then cut a half circle into that folded side of your olive, the flat side. When you open that shape up again, you will see that you have now cut a hole out of it. It was a little tricky for me, I will admit, especially with big kid scissors. Looking back, I would use smaller ones. But look at that, you have a hole in the middle of the olive. As I kept cutting out my olives, I started to brainstorm what other toppings people put on their pizzas. I didn't make any broccoli or spinach or little anchovy fish. I didn't even make pineapple and some people really like that. That's their business. But I did forget to make pepperoni and I had some red scrap paper left over. So I drew some circles and cut them out of my red scrap paper. And there we go. I made some pepperoni easy peasy. I'm glad I included it too. It's such a popular topping. Next up, we're gonna make our cheese for the pizza. I'm going to make some shredded or grated cheese with this yarn, and I want them to be all the same size shreds. So I'm going to do that by looping the string around three of my fingers. Not too tight, folks. I don't want you getting hurt. I'm just gently winding it around my fingers. I can take it off quite easily once I'm done winding it and I should be just about done. There you go, that's enough. So I'm about to tuck my pinky in to keep myself safe as I cut, there we go. And here it is up close. I don't know how many times I wound it, but once I took it off my fingers, I have almost a donut of string left. The hole in the middle is where my fingers used to be. And I wanna cut this in half. So let's make that first cut. There we go, whoops a daisies get that string. There we go. You can see that this would still be a little too long for our shredded cheese. So that's why I wanted to cut it one more time so that I'll cut that whole thing in half. And here I go, nice and easy, there we go. I like to separate the strands a little bit so it looks more like cheese and less like yarn that I just cut up. And down the line, it'll be a little easier to mix with my orange yarn. I'm gonna do the same exact thing I did with the yellow yarn, wrapping it around my fingers and then cutting that in half. You don't need to add the orange yarn if you just wanna have your yellow yarn cheese, but I liked adding the two colors together just so I could have more color in my pizza. I already have all these different colors of toppings and my red sauce is just gonna make it all a little more interesting. It's gonna make my pizza pie into a pizza art. <laughs> you get it? It's a, pretty, it's a pretty good joke. Anyways, I'm taking the orange cheese strands and mixing them together with the yellow cheese strands so I can have a nice blend. And look at that. I think we're ready to build our whole pizza together. So I'm using a lot of glue for this. I know I say not to use too much, but we're gonna be using every drop of this. So I'm making some zigzags of glue here. And then you're going to take your cheese and sprinkle it all over that pizza. 
I tried to make it as even as possible, but it's okay. You're gonna see a lot of glue showing through the cheese. So let's use all of that extra glue we see to glue our toppings. So wherever I see some white showing through the cheese, well, I'm gonna use that for a topping spot. So you can see I'm just pressing the toppings in to each little glue drop I'm noticing. I'm taking extra care to spread my toppings out evenly across my pizza. I don't want all of my green toppings to be on one half and all of my black olives to be on one slice. I want it all to be spread out evenly so that if I had a piece of this pizza, I would get to have a taste of each topping. But as I do that, I also want to overlap a couple of my toppings. On a real pizza in real life, you're gonna notice that some of your toppings overlap as well. They're not just perfectly laid out all the time. Sometimes half of a bell pepper is buried under your cheese, or maybe you have a pepperoni that's half on top of a piece of mushroom. If you're making a pizza that has a lot of toppings, the chances are some will just naturally overlap. So you might as well make it art. You can see that I picked up the glue bottle. I had run out of glue spots on my pizza. I had already stuck all the toppings down on that. So now I get to really control where I want the toppings to go. And now I can spread them out a little bit better and do some of the overlapping I mentioned. And that's going to really just sell how deluxe this pizza really is. And friends, you don't have to be very gentle when you're sticking all of this on. In fact, you wanna be pushing down on all of your toppings and cheese every now and again so that you know that everything got a little glue on it. Once it all dries, this beautiful pizza will be cut into slices and none of the toppings or cheese will fall if you wait. While we wait, let's do some pizza math. Okay, so friends, we know that a pizza is usually cut into eight slices. So on the back of my pizza, I numbered slices that I drew from one to eight. You can practice counting or you can cut all of these slices out and do your own fraction math. If I get really hungry and I eat half a pizza, how many slices does that mean I ate? Let's count together. So one, two, three, four slices. If I eat half of a pizza, I would have eaten four slices because one half of eight is four. Let's flip those all around and think of a new problem. Let's say I'm trying to feed four people with one pizza. How many slices would each person get if there was eight slices in the pizza? So let's count for each four people, one person, two people, three people, four people. Now each can get a second slice and we'll keep doing that till we run out. And look at that. It looks like everyone will be able to get the same number of slices, two, because two times four is eight. Eight slices of pizza. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully making your own fun pizza. I'll hope to see you at the next one. Bye.